Hey everyone, my name is Chris and thanks for coming to my channel. In this video, I wanted to talk about online banks, uh, particularly how are they different from your traditional brick and mortar banks and the types of people that might benefit from uh, using these online banks. So just a disclaimer before we start, um, this is by no means financial advice. Uh, I'm just sharing uh, my experiences with some of these banks and then my opinions on, on the rest of them. So let's get started. All right, so what's an online bank? The main difference between an online bank and a traditional brick and mortar bank is that online banks don't have those brick and mortar locations. Um, so for all of these different online banks that we're gonna talk about, you're not going to see uh, branches uh, around your house or in different neighborhoods or things like that. These solely live online. And really that allows for these types of banks to offer the types of services and the types of rates that they do that we'll discuss. So since online banks don't have these physical branches, um, a lot of people sometimes see that as a disadvantage. And I know that whenever I talk to some of my friends about the, the different online banks that are available, um, they see it as a negative that they don't have these physical branches to go to. Um, so we'll discuss later on why these not having physical branches actually can make for a better product and um, if depositing cash or things that you need to do at a physical ATM or location, I'll discuss how I get around that um, personally. So the physical branch versus non-physical branches, that's usually the main distinction. But another way that I like to describe uh, the differences between online and traditional banks is just the user experience of banking. So it, this kind of ties back to not having physical branches. Online banks, the only interaction they get with customers is either over the phone or through their, their banking app. Um, so that means that they need to spend a lot of time and a lot of resources working on an app that is fun, easy, and just good for the user to use. They need to build something that lets the users uh, stay within the app and actually do things. Uh, that are in the app. Personally, whenever I log into my traditional brick and mortar bank uh, app, there's really not much there. I look at my balance, I look to see what transactions have gone through there, I pay bills. There's not a lot of user experience there. It does what it needs to do. And for big banks like that, that's really all they need. Uh, but for online banks where they're uh, depending on customers to use their app and use the services that are available within the app, this serves as an incentive for them to build a user experience that's, uh, that's different than what's traditionally available and something that's more uh, fun to use. And since online banks only have their app uh, to interact with their customers, uh, you'll see a lot of them try to differentiate themselves by delivering different types of solutions using different kinds of technology. So you'll see companies that are using uh, certain algorithms or uh, machine learning to try to help you categorize your expenses. They might help you uh, track your spending and see if there's instances where you can move some of that money into a savings account. So there's different ways that uh, these online banks try to differentiate themselves uh, using technology and the, the app experience as a whole. So when online banking started, there weren't really a lot of banks out there, uh, but now you're starting to see them all over the place. And a lot of them have things that they do well and things that they don't really focus their time on. Uh, so you'll see a lot of these niche banks that either focus on helping you budget, they focus on helping you save or track your spending. Um, a lot of these apps have different of those features, uh, but you'll see that some apps really focus heavily on one or very few of those features. So for example, let's say you wanna find a way to automate your savings. Banks like Digit uh, use technology to track your spending and then move portions of that into a dedicated savings account. This might make it easy for, you, for users who are trying to start saving or they just need a little bit of help. If you're really into budgeting or creating goals, uh, Simple has made it exceptionally easy with their goals feature. They let Simple lets you create a goal for just about anything and then allocate money within your checking account to those goals so that you have a clear picture of where your money is allocated and what you really have available to spend. And finally, if you just want a place to stash your savings, most online banks offer extremely competitive interest rates uh, that you probably wouldn't find at traditional banks. So if we go back to online banks not having physical locations, how do you get money in and out of the banks? Let's talk about that for a little bit. 
So most of these online banks support direct deposit. So if that's your main method of getting paid, uh, a lot of those banks have that covered. A lot of these banks also allow you to uh, deposit checks via the app. So taking a picture of the check and depositing it into your account, uh, that's also a very common feature here. Uh, the tricky part comes whenever you try to deposit cash. So now I wanna talk about how I get around depositing cash into an online bank. So whenever I'm talking about online banking, I haven't completely abandoned traditional brick and mortar. So here's how I get around depositing cash into my online banking accounts. Um, I still have a traditional brick and mortar account. So I have a credit union account and I also have uh, just a regular Chase checking account. So the way I handle that is I just go to my traditional brick and mortar bank, deposit the money there, and then transfer it to my online bank. So that's how to get money into an online bank. So how do you get money out of an online bank? So online banks offer debit cards just like any other uh, traditional bank. So there's nothing different there. But things start to change a little bit when it comes to ATMs. Um, so since I have a Chase account, uh, I have access to all of these different Chase ATMs and I don't have to pay a fee. But if I decide to use a Wells Fargo ATM, Bank of America ATM, uh, there's a fee that I have to pay and Chase isn't going to reimburse that. Well, th that's where online banks also start to differentiate themselves too. A lot of these online banks either partner with some sort of ATM network where you can use different ATMs and they don't charge you any fees. And some banks even go the extra mile and uh, reimburse you for any fees that you incur when using other ATMs. Uh, which basically means you can use any ATM that you want and um, you get those fees reimbursed. So I really appreciate that perk. I also use Ally Checking and they reimburse up to $10 uh, in ATM fees per month. Um, so if I ever need to withdraw cash for anything, I can go to any ATM, just go to the one that's closest to me and not have to worry about uh, finding an ATM where I won't have to pay a fee. Uh, similarly, uh, Charles Schwab uh, takes it one step further and they offer unlimited ATM reimbursements worldwide, meaning that you can use your ATM anywhere and they'll reimburse you uh, for those fees that you incur either here in the US or anywhere outside the US as well. So these are just some different types of things that the, the online banks can offer, mostly in part because they don't have the overhead of having to staff all of these physical branches and also they don't have to physically maintain all of these different ATMs as well. So it's really nice perk of having a, an account with one of these online banks. So for me, where online banks really differentiate themselves from traditional banks, uh, just comes down to the savings account. A lot of them offer interest rates on savings accounts that are way more competitive than something that you would find at a traditional bank. And this is also because of the overhead that they're saving from not having those physical branches. So I'm just saying that as a broad statement, online bank accounts typically have uh, higher interest rates on savings accounts than traditional checking savings accounts. And I'll show you some examples here where you can see even though the interest rate might seem low at one to two percent, uh, if you compare it to what you get at a Chase or a Wells Fargo or a traditional bank, it's a lot higher uh, and you're actually getting something notable, noticeable out of it. So I'm not going to dig into the details about the different rates for different online banks in this video. I just This is more informational to let you know that if you are looking for somewhere to keep your money that offers a more competitive interest rate, online banks would be a good place to start. So in the end, who are online banks for? They can really be for anybody who's either looking to be more active with their finances and change the way that they bank. Um, and there's honestly a lot of options there. So whether you want to take budgeting to a new level and account for every dollar that's in your checking account, or you want to leverage some sort of technology to help you kickstart your savings, or just find a place for your savings to sit while they earn you something, online banking is definitely a way to go. Hey everyone, thanks a lot for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to give a quick intro on online banking in case some of you still had any questions. Uh, I've been using online banking for quite a few years now and have accounts open with a few institutions. So I plan on making more videos like this, just talking about the specific accounts and how I use them. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, I'd really appreciate it so that more people can, can see it. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and subscribe. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
I'm really into this personal finance topic and really uh, being more in charge of your finances. Uh, so if these types of videos are things that you'd like to see. Let me know in a comment down below of other topics that you might want me to cover. And also hit that bell so that anytime I upload a new video, uh, you get a notification. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.